Okay, my name is Bob Kleba. I'm David Waugh. And we bought the old governor's residence here at 130 East Gilman Street in Madison, Wisconsin. And we are in the process of remodeling it into a, an eight room hotel. So Bob, why don't we take uh, a little tour of the house and maybe as we tour the outside of the house, we can uh, tell a little bit of the history that we know. Oh, that's a great idea, David. So what we do know about the house is that the, uh, it's made of sandstone, quarried sandstone uh, from uh, Westport, Wisconsin. So that's across the lake uh, from, from this location. It's built in an Italianate uh, Victorian style. 1854 was the date of the original construction of the house, and that's just this front part. The farther part was added in the 1870s, um, also of the same stone, when the Thorpes and Ole Bull lived here. The original builder of the house was Julius White. He had a position in the uh, state government, and, uh, but was better known as a lumber baron. He quickly sold the building to a man named Delaplane, and uh, Delaplane sold it to the Thorpes, who were also uh, lumber barons from uh, previously from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, in the 1870s. And uh, when the Thorpes lived here, they tore down the wood frame construction in the back of the house and put on the uh, stone uh, construction. Uh, in, 1880, in the 1880s, the building was sold to the uh, then governor of Wisconsin, Rusk, and Rusk had it bought by the state, uh, and it became the governor's mansion until 1950. So a uh, few features on the outside that uh, we can see are um, what remains of a porch that was built in the 18, I'm sorry, 1898, uh, designed by Conover Porter, some, many of the historic pictures of the house for when the governors lived here had a uh, wraparound porch that was very grand uh, that was torn down in 1960. You can also see some of the flashing lines from the original porches that were here in the 1850s. So we assume that there was a porch here because you can see flashing going up to the window um, this entrance might have served as a type of um, a port cochere, uh, where you would drive your carriage up to the uh, house and, and go into the porch, or under the porch and then into the house at this point. Uh, there was always a uh, front door, and that had uh, different flashing lines, which you can see there, from a uh, porch from the 1850s again. It goes up to that window and then down. And of course, there's a, a flashing line from the 1898 porch. Um, and like I said, this is all that remains from the, uh, the 1898 porch with its uh, Greek style columns. So, um, an interesting thing to note about uh, the windows is that when the building was built in 1850, in the 1850s, uh, uh, buildings were taxed on their on the number of doors. So uh, many of the windows were built to serve as doors, and on the inside uh, there are a few closets. So um, from from the 1850s, of course, when it was originally built, it was built to be heated with wood and uh, the wood fireplaces were upgraded to coal, and then at some point uh, gas lighting was installed. A couple things that we can see where the building doesn't face the street and where the grade was higher, you see just a rubble exterior as opposed to the quarried sandstone. This door was a door that was built to go into a garage that uh, Governor Rennebaum had built and you can see some of the flashing lines from that garage up here. Um, interestingly, before Rennebaum had this door built, there was just a window here. So there was no exit to this part of the building for the 1950s. 
couple of these windows were added probably after the building was constructed, like that small window there. We have regraded this area so that we can have uh, four parking spaces back here. We will have a total of eight parking spaces for eight guest rooms, four on this side, four on the other side. What we're doing here is we are reinstalling the gas service and the electrical service to farther back in the building. The original set of lots, I should say, uh, went uh, from where that building stands over to that curb. So it was quite a large lot in downtown Madison. I'm not sure when that uh, western lot was sold, but that's not part of the property anymore. The state owned this, uh, owned this lot until we bought it in 2017, and they divided it uh, for the university's life-saving station down there, and then our lot. Our lot is two-thirds of an acre. I'm not sure how much that is. Regardless, uh, we have enough of a lot that, re that reflects the historic grand uh, lot that these mansions used to have uh, in this part of Madison all the way down the lake. The, up until, oh geez, I don't know when, um, 1940s, 1950s, there was a large garage back here which replaced the carriage house where the governor's horses were kept, governor's carriage and governor's horses. And then below that area, there was a boathouse. And there's almost nothing of the boathouse remaining nowadays except uh, part of the uh, foundation of the original governor's boathouse. But the sidewalk that we have that goes from our house down toward the lake connected the governor's garage and boathouse. Interestingly, uh, last week, when we put drainage in for the downspouts, we found a tunnel. And the tunnel sits right in here. and goes from the house down to the old governor's garage. And uh, we did not break the surface of the tunnel. The tunnel is still intact as far as we know. But we believe that that had the uh, steam pipes and... Uh, uh, water and uh, electricity to uh, service the, the garage. This porch actually dates to the 1870s. Uh, you can see it in some of the historic photos of the house from that period. And uh, that we don't have to uh, do any modifications to happily. When this house was built, the drinking water and uh, well, all the water for the house was collected in cisterns. So here's one of those cisterns. And we found two large cisterns on the property. Uh, maybe a third, uh, or evidence of a third, when we excavated the parking on the east side of the property. What's interesting, too, is that in the 1920s, when the bathrooms were installed by Governor Kohler Sr., Walter Kohler Sr. Uh, the bathrooms were plumbed for three kinds of water. There was cold, soft cistern water for washing hands and for bathing. There was hot water, which is from the cistern as well. And there was a tap for city water, which was for drinking. So three separate um, uh, lines of plumbing, all with lead piping, of course. Uh, but uh, the cisterns were important all the way into the 30s in this property. This porch was constructed in 1960 when the 1898 porch was uh, removed. What we're doing is uh, we're basically going to raise the floor so that uh, the floor meets this threshold and um, uh, that will provide an accessible entrance for the property. Uh, it, Along with that, we were going to build a, uh, a walkway that ramps up from the front of the building up to here. And that will give us our 5% uh, grade to um, the, this, this end of the porch. The walkway will be bermed with some landscaping on, uh, on the uh, west side 
Um, nothing terribly fancy, but uh, very uh, practical. So when we enter on the side entrance, we come right into the dining room. And uh, the dining room is interesting. Um, uh, originally built in the 1870s, as I mentioned before. However, it has been remodeled and what, uh, what they did in the 18... 80s, late 1880s, we think 1888, is uh, they added this coved ceiling, which uh, involved raising the, the floor on the second floor as well. Uh, a lot of the historic pictures that you'll find from this property involve receptions with the governor's wives having receptions in the dining room. So if we go back to the original construction of the house, you have a, a door that went back two doors that went back to the, uh, the kitchen area in the wood frame construction, and then an exterior door that went to a porch, and the porch went out onto the uh, east side of the building and wrapped around a little bit. The parlor's interesting. It uh, has a few uh, a few things that have been changed since uh, the original 1850s uh, construction. Uh, first thing to notice is that gas lighting was added and uh, where you see these electrical sconces, uh, you can imagine that they were originally gas sconces. Um, as far as the building's construction goes, uh, almost all the walls are, are made of uh, sandstone. However, the exterior walls were furred out, so there is an air gap behind the plaster in which you can get some utilities, and they use that for the gas plumbing and electricity later on. Um, the windows in this part of the house have uh, shutters on the inside that have been painted shut. And if you look carefully, you can see the hinges in some places uh, maybe not on this side, but uh, yeah, right here you can see a hinge for the built-in shutters. And of course there were shutters on the exterior of the building, which are, are long gone. Um, currently the, uh, the lighting here is electric. Um, not sure when these chandeliers were installed. There are four from this um, uh, of this style in the building, only two of which are installed. But, uh, uh, and of course, before the electric chandeliers, there was a gas uh, chandelier uh, for which you can still see the stub out. I'm not sure when the plaster work dates to. That could have been added after construction. It's definitely from the 18th century. Uh, this room still has the plaster detail in the ceiling. Um, the reception room, the larger room, has lost that uh, detail in the ceiling but still has the plaster uh, cornices. So if we come over here, we can get an idea of what uh, the front entrance looked like. Uh, coming in here, we have uh, Oh, we're not sure if a chandelier was originally here, but this grand staircase, and uh, this is one of the signature, <laughs> it's not very well presented right now, but one of the signature uh, features of the house, um, spindles and railing uh, and newel posts are all made of mahogany. And I'm sorry they're not visible right now, they will be once we uh, complete the remodeling. Um, the plaster, this style plaster work is original to the, uh, uh, the construction of the house, we believe, 1850s. Um, not sure exactly what this arch is about. That could be original, maybe not. Um, might be hiding something, we're not sure. Um, what is the, what's all that piping there? Oh, the piping. Well, of course, this is the, uh, the plumbing for the steam heating. And uh, not sure when that was installed, sometime probably 1900, 1890s, sometime in then. And uh, uh, that uh, all goes down to the boiler room. The coves um, on either side of the hallway are original to the construction of the house. They're, um, 
they're nice features because they're they're actually hollow on the inside whereas uh, when you go to the uh, the wall here that's just plaster on sandstone so there's really no way to get utilities into the sandstone wall but in some areas we can sneak them in behind these these coves. We're not sure uh, when this mirror became part of the house. There are photos of this mirror in the reception room um, in the 1930s. That mirror was, uh, was found here. This room had the, uh, the plaster detail in the ceiling at one point and also two chandeliers which we will reinstall. We will buy chandeliers to, uh, to restore. Yeah, we don't have the original. It's, it's nice to sometimes think about the history of this house, starting out with no electricity. All of no the gas lighting. All of the lighting would have been candle. All heat would be these fireplaces that you see. There would have been eight fireplaces. Um, it is unique to have two fireplaces in one room, which is one reason we think this was divided. And I think I read somewhere that this might have been actually the ladies' drawing room, oh. which was a, a common room off of a reception room where the, the ladies of the house would withdraw to for privacy. Mm -hmm. In many of the historic photos, you'll see these marble fireplace pieces painted white. And uh, happily, somebody made the effort to uh, remove the white paint. You can still see some traces of the white paint in the cracks in the marble. Um, one fun feature as far as uh, remodeling goes is that uh, um, we have the sandstone wall and then a chase. And this chase was added to the house when uh, Governor Kohler had a bathroom installed upstairs, so he needed to get the plumbing down and that's where that plumbing went. So that's a good feature for us because we can use that for getting utilities in the house. However, what, uh, what's even more interesting is that uh, when that work was done, the plaster, was up, the plaster cornice was redone in a way that uh, makes uh, this space symmetric uh, as opposed to just the fireplace. So whatever they did, they did a really good job. Another thing to notice about the fireplace is that it's been upgraded from wood. Okay, the wood fireplace would have been much larger to coal. So this uh, cast iron piece was added on and the fireplace is much shallower. And we're going to replace that with a gas insert to appear as like a, a coal fireplace, basically. There is a door that's been sealed over right here. And this door was probably an exterior door that went out to a porch. And this was one of the original porches of the house on facing the lake. Even though we can't see the lake very well right now, if you imagine a two-story structure downhill from this building, there would have been a fantastic view of the lake from this room. Let's check out the kitchen. When the house was built, the, uh, there was a wooden structure attached to the uh, 1850s structure. And that, as I said before, that was removed in the 1870s. And this stone structure was built, of course, with wood carpentry on the inside. What's interesting about the structure here is that you see a lot of um, very old construction techniques in the, um, in the way this was built. The, um, the joists are uh, butted into a, a beam using a half mortise construction technique. And unfortunately, this beam is sagging a little bit, so we have to add a little more support with a post. That's gonna go somewhere, somewhere in here, I believe, down to the basement. This was the original kitchen, going back to this wall, uh, the original kitchen built in the 1870s. So there was uh, probably a cook stove here. 
You can see the, the, the flu, which has been uh, blocked up in the, uh, the chimney there. So a cook stove here, probably a large cook stove. Um, there was a butler's pantry over here. Uh, they would have called it a china closet. And we're saving a little bit of that, not much, unfortunately. And the, against the back of the butler's pantry was a sink. Um, here you have an idea of what the plaster on the sandstone looks like. Many layers, many different remodels. Um, over here you can see where they put electrical outlets into the wall, which went as deep as the sandstone. And we'll be doing this in a couple places, I hate to say. So if you want to put an electrical outlet in the, in the sandstone wall, you just have to carve it out into the rock. Not an easy task, but something we'll need to do. Um, I don't know where that went, but you can see evidence of the lead plumbing. Um, the other thing that's interesting is um, that quarried sandstone um, above the plaster. And I have a theory that the addition, which we think dates back to the 1870s, was done, done in two steps. And I have very little to base that, very little evidence to base that on, except that that's exterior grade quarried sandstone, which you see all the way down into the basement. Um, on this wall, and maybe it was done in two separate phases, I don't know. Kitchen, uh, and then that became the dining room, and then this became the kitchen, added later on sometime in the 1870s when they had more money, I do not know. On the exterior, it's very difficult to tell that there was, uh, that it would have been built in two separate uh, phases. In the back, there was a back entrance for service, um, uh, a feature which I did not point out from the exterior is that there's a fake window opposite this wall on the, on the exterior and the Victorians did that often for symmetry just to have um, the symmetry in the, um, uh, in the facade and there's a window above here but there's no window here uh, so they just put in um, shutters um, on the exterior. And then there was never, never an intention to have um, a window here. But these would have been pantries or um, uh, food storage areas. Um, we believe at some point the, um, the, this was carved out. There's, there are two doors on the exterior. And this was carved out for uh, maybe bringing in ice. Okay, uh, It would make more sense to have the ice box in the basement. but. Um, uh, we're not exactly sure. We don't really have a good reason for there being a, uh, a service door here. But there it is. Uh, here we have a door, and here we have another door, which is kind of curious. Eventually it got uh, uh, enclosed with a window. This was a small room, and uh, we're using what was a window in that corner as a uh, ventilation for uh, the bathrooms that we're putting in on this floor. So this window, at least since the 1930s, was, was uh, used for uh, venting the kitchen. And uh, when we bought the property, there was a, a large, more commercial vent installed here that's been removed. And uh, we don't need that anymore, and we're restoring the window back to uh, uh, what it would have looked like in the 1870s. So the rooms we're installing are the, uh, the guest, uh, is a guest room here. So this will be a guest bedroom. It's small, but uh, it's the only room that we can, we can have that will be accessible because it's on the first floor and we will not be building an elevator, uh, installing an elevator. Uh, an accessible bathroom. And, um, and then as you come into this part of the house, you, you come in through here, walk through here, you have a restroom, and a restroom, those are required by code, two restrooms, and then uh, a kitchen. And this will be 
one of the smallest commercial kitchens known to man. Um, not terribly excited about uh, having such a small kitchen, but this is what we ended up with. Uh, we can't add on to the property, so we have to work with the footprint that we've got. And we're not moving any of these sandstone walls. So small commercial kitchen, and we're preserving the, um, the, the sink, <laughs> what remains of the sink that was in the butler's pantry, even though we probably will never see the sink. It's been uh, framed over. So let's go downstairs and take a look at some of the features in, in the basement. With uh, generations of utilities that haven't been removed yet, uh, some things we won't remove, of course. The steam plumbing we need to maintain because that will be heating the house. The electrical service, uh, currently comes in here and uh, it's, a, it's a 125 amp service which is just phenomenal if you think of the size of the building, a 5,000 square foot building with a 125 amp service. Needless to say we're, we're replacing that with a 400 amp service which is uh, a little bit scary but uh, we're doing that nonetheless. Um, we have to because of the, um, uh, because of the requirements for uh, air conditioning. So electrical service is going to the other side of the building, and we already looked at the, uh, where it was excavated. This, uh, this was uh, most recently a laundry area, and uh, we don't know what it has served in previous lives, but um, I do know that uh, there was a, a water closet here at one point in time and I assume it was a water closet for the um, servants. We've added some plumbing for, for our laundry. Uh, this space will also be used a little bit for um, the commercial kitchen upstairs. We'll probably have our uh, freezer, refrigerator, ice maker down here in the laundry area. This is an interesting feature. We never really did figure out what this was. Our suspicion is that it, uh, this connects to one of the cisterns and there used to be some furniture here, built-in furniture, a cabinet, that probably housed a pump. And that pump was what drew from the cistern and fed the cistern water throughout the house. That's my suspicion. Back in the days when they had electricity, and probably, uh, if you think about it, uh, probably a hand pump in the kitchen upstairs for drawing uh, cistern water. So, uh, the base for the new post that's going to hold up the second floor, eventually. Again, uh, um, this is that exterior wall halfway through the uh, 1870s edition. You can see that it's quarried sandstone. It's a little bit rougher down here, but it's still exterior grade sandstone, which is funny. Um, not quite sure what that's about. Then we go into the more modern boiler room. And that's the original chimney for the original steam heat. That would have been coal fired. Not sure where the coal room was in this property, maybe somewhere forward, uh, maybe towards the front of the street here. But uh, regardless, uh, the, this is our current boiler and uh, it's served us well so far. The mechanical room, this will be a hallway coming through here, we have to separate the mechanical room uh, from general living space, general workspace for, for fire reasons. So we'll be uh, building a wall along here and this will be a hallway coming through here and going into the caretaker's quarters, uh, which is a new feature in the house. But uh, as far as the mechanical room goes, it's interesting and again, um, my you know, a suspicion that the house, that the addition was done in two phases. Um, this was a window or a door uh, way uh, going over into um, probably a window in an exterior wall. Um, there, where you're standing now, where you, the cameraman, uh, we found another very large cistern. <laughs> so uh, almost a good chunk of the room has a cistern underneath it. 
and happily we've done enough, enough excavation to generate rubble to fill the cistern and we've capped it off. But uh, this is the most recent cistern in the property, rather large feature. Um, so we're heading back into the 1850s portion of the house. Um, different chunks removed at different times. Um, electrical put upstairs through here. But uh, we just this week uh, poured the floor for uh, the caretaker's quarters. And unfortunately, um, the floor in the caretaker's quarters is much higher than we wanted it to be. We really didn't have a choice because the bottom of the wall is right here. This is basically the uh, foundation of the house. And underneath these stones is earth. So we really didn't have much of a choice as far as what the floor level was going to be. Uh, we excavated it out. Uh, we put uh, gravel down, then a vapor barrier, then insulation. And, uh, and here we are. So we will have somebody living on site full time. And uh, this area will be the kitchen. So uh, kitchen sink, uh, range, refrigerator. Then uh, basically a living room area, uh, bathroom, uh, closet, and a uh, little sitting area. Uh, changes on the exterior that we're doing in this room are uh, we're putting in um, a larger window. So we're taking the window up to here, which makes more sense, really, as far as a, a level, to make a livable space. So we're uh, putting in a modern window from, from here up to here, uh, putting in a stone header up there. Um, and then we're also changing this window, keeping the header, the, the wooden header that's there now, but just dropping it down to the same level as the other window. Um, what's interesting about this room is that uh, it had uh, soft brick paving on sand. So that was this room. And uh, uh, ironically, we uh, installed drainage throughout this room. It's drained behind this plastic wall down to plastic plumbing in the gravel below the concrete and then out to a sump pump at the far end of the house. Um, I say ironic because when I dug up part of the plumbing that went through here from the 1929, uh, 1928 bathroom installation in the uh, second floor, I found uh, newspapers that uh, somebody had stuffed under the plumbing in order to uh, hold the plumbing up while they buried it, and they were still readable in the floor, in the basement. So they had not degraded at all. So I don't think we're going to get any water in this basement. There are a couple of historic features in, the, in this room that are interesting. This piece of wood looks like it's from a shipping crate, and it's got the name Ole Bull. And Ole Bull is one of the most famous people who lived here, a Norwegian impresario violinist. And uh, we suspect that this was salvaged from a crate that uh, shipped uh, things of his from Norway to, uh, to here when he lived here in the 1870s. Other features that are historic are the ducts. There were air ducts here, and there's another one here, and another one here. And what's interesting about the air duct here is you know that this was done after construction because you can see the framing has been totally massacred. And um, that's something that we'll have to repair. But the, there is in the literature about this house documentation about uh, the second owner of the house, Delaplane, installing uh, uh, not a forced air system, but uh, maybe a convection air heating system. So we believe that there was a boiler in that middle room 
that uh, fed the hot air that went into the upper levels. And it's the, ostensibly the first house in Madison to have central heat. This is before steam heat, before forced air as we currently know it. So this is an interesting feature. This was buried in the, in the ceiling somewhere. Um, these are, and this is the system for calling servants. So like in Downton Abbey, you'd have the sash cord that you pull. I don't know, it wasn't a sash cord. It was a sash or a cord, whatever, that you pulled to uh, ring a bell in the uh, servants area. And that and these were just wires. And you, you can find elsewhere in the house, buried in the walls, some of these little hinge type things so that you can get the, the movement to go around corners. We are under those two grand marble fireplaces in the reception room. And you'll notice that uh, when they built the hearth, they vaulted the, the floor, the foundation of the floor. And furthermore, you'll see that they put a header joist across to bear the load of the, uh, the room joists. Now, as the same with the, um, the kitchen area. The room joists are half mortised but the header is a full mortise and tenon, okay? So that's basically medieval construction technique. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's nothing modern about that. But if we come in here, we can see some of the original uh, brick flooring, soft brick flooring on sand, and that's what was in that room at this level. This room's interesting because you can see, uh, yeah, so evidence of the fireplace, um, cleaning out, as David said, cleaning out the fireplace from above, okay. Um, also, the ductwork for that forced, or the, the, the central air system um, that uh, Delaplane installed in the 1870s. And um, uh, probably, well, we're not sure what this went to. But, uh, and then there's, uh, somebody signed his name over here. T. Hoy, June 1882. So, some of these walls are older than they appear. Um, but you can see that there was some sort of uh, heating or some uh, large mechanism in this area uh, that might have been an ash clean-out area. Um, and then this might have been the flue that went up the chimney. Who knows? Oh, there's some old ice skates. So let's go look at the new water service. It's the second attempt at the installation. The first attempt had a leak. Um, happily, I didn't have to pay for the, uh, the, uh, the reinstallation. But um, we replaced a, um, a two inch water service with six inch. We only need four inch, but apparently six inch is cheaper than four inch. Um, don't ask me why, but uh, the, the reason we had to upgrade the water service is so that we can install sprinklers in the house. Okay. So over time, the, uh, the wire uh, uh, bell ringing system was replaced with electric, ring, electric uh, buzzers, electric buzzers, electric bells. And this is the wiring from that. Oh, and then uh, we have some of the original columns from the 1898 uh, uh, Conover Porter porch uh, that was torn down in the 60s. So we have, a, I think, three columns still from that era, made of wood. One thing that Sprinklers gives us is the ability to maintain features like this staircase. Um, the staircase for commercial code is too narrow. The railings are too short. <laughs> and, uh, and it's open. So in a commercial structure, you want the staircase to be enclosed in a fireproof structure. But we're putting sprinklers on it. 
Here you can see some of the features of the mahogany spindles. Now we'll head up into the older part of the house. And even more interesting, the staircase continues up to the attic in its very grand style. But there's nothing in the attic worth uh, visiting. Uh, we can start in the grandest room, let's say room 200, which has a beautiful fireplace. Marble, again, converted to coal at some point in time. The fireplaces in the, uh, in the upstairs have their original uh, hearths, uh, which is nice. And you'll notice that the flooring is actually above the level of the hearth. The flooring was added in the 1870s. It was documented that uh, Ole Bull uh, spent the money to have the flooring finished. Um, upstairs, you'll notice that the sashes are the original configuration. So um, uh, two over two and um, two, what is it, two over three? Is that what they say? So um, because they couldn't get panes of glass larger than this. Again, where you, wherever you see the um, electric sconces, imagine the gas lighting. And of course, we have the most modern feature of all the uh, electric lighting. Um, 1828, these bathrooms were installed by Walter Kohler Sr. And they are in really excellent shape. It's, uh, this, this tub was manufactured in 1928. No cracks, no chipping. This is the original pedestal sink, porcelain. Um, the toilet's new, of course, but hot and cold, uh, cistern water, and then city drinking water. And then very deluxe uh, electrical features for, the, for Walter Kohler. Three light bulbs, three naked light bulbs. And the original uh, vanity. This room has uh, some beautiful cornices in it. None of the other bedrooms have any of these cornices. One of the main, one of the big problems this house had is that the uh, roof was understructured, and uh, it was there were some attempts to uh, to fix that, and the attempt actually pushed weight onto these walls and then onto the floor. If you look at the uh, plaster cornice, you can see that it dips inside. And when you look at the door, you can see that things are sagging. But it hasn't moved since the 1920s. And we know that because the bathrooms, the, none of the tile work has any cracks in it. So whatever shifted, whatever settled has settled, and we're just going to leave it. Original tile, there's some beautiful tile work under here, which we'll see eventually, but that's the original 1850s tile work in one of the fireplaces that's still designed for wood. So I'm not quite sure why this is framed this way. Um, typically this was done to, to put in a mortar bed and a mortar bed would be, do, would be done for a bathroom, so you could put tile on it. So you put down uh, concrete here. We'll have to ask the, um, our uh, project manager to find out what he knows about this construction. But uh, this is the back wall for the, uh, for the 1928 bathroom. This is the stack that goes down through the chase that I pointed out. Um, currently, we've got, um, oh, yeah, it jogs over. Actually, it jogs over, over to there. The, of course, the bathrooms were all uh, plumbed with lead pipe back in the day, back in the 1920s. Well, that was just the limit of lead, lead plumbing, happily. When we bought the house, this was two separate closets, and we're converting the two separate closets into another bathroom. All rooms will have their own bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The most difficult bathroom was this one. Uh, we just didn't have much of a closet to work with, and it's a very small bathroom, but um, we should be able to get a shower, toilet, and sink, small sink here. 
with the door opening this way. You can get an idea what the original plumbing looked like, or I'm sorry, the original uh, flooring in the house was just this, these pine boards. Nice, but, um, but not, uh, not up to the standards of Oli Bull. This room has a fireplace, marble surround, or whatever you call that, and beautiful tile work underneath, but it's been painted. And then this room um, had a beautiful, had a fireplace as well. The fireplace was removed to accommodate the plumbing for this bathroom that was installed by Walter Kohler Sr. Again, in really good shape. No issues with it. All the whew, all the modern conveniences. So let's go over and look at the uh, 1870s edition. Uh, when the house was originally built, there was a window through here, we believe, and uh, it was opened up for a passageway when they added a second story in the 1870s. And um, you can see. Uh, maybe it was just an access to the attic, but you can see the original wood frame construction was, was this. So um, this would have been an interior wall uh, for, uh, I don't know why there would have been plaster all the way up here, but this is um, again exterior quarried uh, limestone, or sandstone rather, and then uh, you can see the roof flashing goes all the way up, up here. So this is exterior wall. This would have been an interior wall. So maybe this was uh, like a small attic space in the original wood frame construction. Don't know, don't know. You can see that where the wall wasn't visible, the wall was just rubble, rubble put together with mortar. Um, the original header was somewhere right in here, which made it a very difficult uh, uh, access from the landing up to here. We're reconfiguring these stairs to bring them farther back so you have even more head space. Um, and uh, we did take out part of the wall. You can see the 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 doorway went from here to here and we did remove the plaster for that and took out some stone um, this is the window upstairs that you'll see from the on the from the access to the attic we'll have three more guest rooms on this on this part of the house the original passageway um, which may not have been original it may have been just uh, one room here and then another room um, but uh, when we bought the property, there was a hallway through here, and where you're standing, where you are, the camera, uh, there was a, a water closet in this area, and we've removed the plumbing for that. There was a stack went up to the through the roof, and then um, and then down to the basement through here. Um, actually, it didn't go through the basement. It actually jogged over to the wall and then went down to the basement. But um, there was probably a toilet in this room, small, like I said, water closet for this part of the house. The, um, but the way we're redesigning it is we removed the passageway from the center of the house where there were stairs to the exterior of the house where we're standing now. And we're maintaining the historic space for the two bedrooms, but, and then building the bathroom out into the passageway area. Why there's a stair there? Why there's a stair? Okay. And um, I spoke earlier about uh, the dining room ceiling being elevated in the 18, 1888. And uh, as we come from the landing, we step up because the dining room is elevated, and then we step back down again. Okay. So this part of the house had been constructed uh, before that ceiling was, was raised. So a little awkward, but that's just the way it is. 
So the ceiling height's not as high until we get back to the original floor level. I'm not even sure if there was a doorway here. It could have been two totally separate spaces, one for servants and then this for the family. We're not sure. We're not sure what it was like in Bob LaFollette's time, let's say. This will be a bathroom for room 205. And this will be a bathroom. This will be a bathroom for room 207. Yeah, and um, again, uh, gas stub out where the uh, sconce was, and electrical light where the gas light was. That was a closet that we removed. So we'll uh, give us more space for the room. So it'll be a small room, the same footprint as the accessible room downstairs. Um, there was a chimney for heating this part of the house. I'm sorry, there was a, uh, a wood stove probably um, here. And then um, a chimney, ash clean out, um, ducked up there. You can see the, chim or the roof has been reframed to deal with the, uh, uh, to, to, to remove the chimney through the roof. But um, um, that's what heated this part of the house before the steam heat was installed. So then we'll have a bathroom in through here. Um, one nice thing about exposing the walls is that we'll be able to insulate them. So we'll be putting up some uh, two-part cell foam insulation to, uh, to, uh, to make these rooms warmer. Making uh, basically a servant's quarters and making that a guest room. And of course, in the day when they had servants, they didn't give them a lot of space. So it is a challenge for us to make a servant's quarter into a guest room. <laughs> We're not gonna be able to charge as much money for those. It's small. It's small. This was a servant's stairs down to the kitchen. Yeah.